I'm Anu Drivers and I work on the consensus team at Definity. Today I want to tell you about a few key design decisions that we took when designing our consensus algorithm. But first, I'll briefly explain what that is and why we need that. Security and reliability are key aspects of the internet computer vision. What that means is that I can run my software on the internet computer and I know that it will be running correctly, meaning the state of my software will only change according to the rules of my software, and it will be running reliably, meaning that my software will not suddenly stop running. And we want these properties to hold even in the world where some computers might get hacked or some parties might be malicious. To do that, we don't just run software on an individual computer. Instead, on the internet computer, it will run on many different machines across the world. And now, it's not just one individual machine that defines the state of my software, but they all do this together. And this way, if some computers individually might be hacked or malicious, they can report a malicious state for my software, but this will not have any effect because the majority should be running my software correctly. For this approach, we need a consensus algorithm. What that means is that the different computers that run my software agree on which inputs to process and what the resulting output is. We have taken some key design decisions that allows us to have a consensus algorithm which supports a high throughput and a low latency. In the last couple of years, we've seen this approach used very successfully by projects like Bitcoin and Ethereum. This really proved to the world how much security we can get via this approach of replication and decentralization. However, they also show how difficult it is to reach consensus between machines across the world. While they have plans to upgrade their mechanisms, as it stands today, they need a huge amount of energy to reach consensus between the replicas. And additionally, the throughput is very limited, meaning these systems can only handle a limited amount of messages per second, and the latency is very high, meaning that if you interact with these systems, you need to wait a long time before you get a result. Imagine that we try to run a ride-sharing app on the internet computer, but the latency is 15 minutes. That would mean every time I request a ride, I would first have to wait 15 additional minutes before my request even makes it to the software. This would be unusable. So to really unlock the power of the internet computer, we need to have a consensus algorithm which has high throughput and low latency. We took a number of design decisions such that we achieved those goals. As a start, we built our consensus algorithm around the random beacon. This is a verifiable random function, which means that the different replicas that run my software can efficiently agree on some random number. This is a secure random number, so it cannot be biased, and we can use that to securely divide some of the tasks in the consensus algorithm between the replicas. This way, not everybody has to perform every task, which of course gives us an efficiency improvement. We've published this already back in 2017, and since then we took a number of additional design decisions to support this high throughput and low latency. For example, we chose to use data centers to provide the computing power for the internet computer. With this approach, we can rely on standardized and very powerful hardware, which allows consensus to run very fast. And at the same time, by using independent and vetted data centers across the world, we can maximize decentralization. The next important question is how we incentivize those data centers to participate. Some projects choose to reward certain specific actions that are part of the consensus protocol. For example, in Bitcoin, you get a financial reward if you produce the next block. This approach has some downsides, namely that the different replicas are competing with each other for over these rewards. And this competition is not always beneficial for the overall system. What we choose to do is simply reward data centers that offer computing power to the internet computer, so long as they behave according to the protocol rules. Whenever we see a data center deviating from the protocol, they are removed from the internet computer and will no longer be rewarded. With this approach, we can incentivize behavior that benefits the system as a whole instead of encouraging competition between the replicas. We also had some key decisions at the core of the protocol to allow the high throughput and low latency. One important decision we took is that the consensus algorithm only agrees on the input messages that the internet computer will process. This allows consensus to go very fast because we don't need to do the actual processing of the messages. And at the same time, we use our computational resources wisely. We only process the messages that are agreed upon and we never waste computational resources on messages that might not end up reaching agreements for processing. 
to minimize the latency, we look at how we observe agreement. Some consensus protocol take an approach based on network synchrony. What that means is that you need to wait for a certain amount of time, then you hope that you've received all the relevant messages from your fellow replicas, and based on all those messages, you can determine what's agreed upon. For example, if you think of a blockchain, the messages are blocks, and you can observe agreement by looking at the longest blockchain. Such approaches, however, have an inherent trade-off between security on the one hand and low latency on the other hand. If you wait very long to receive all the messages from other replicas, then you're sure you've seen them all after a while, and so you're probably making the right observation that something is finalized, something is agreed upon. However, this long wait is, of course, detrimental for low latency. On the other hand, if you try to only wait for a short amount of time, you might have missed relevant messages and incorrectly think that something is agreed upon, which harms security. We therefore take a different approach. We add an asynchronous finalization layer to our consensus algorithm. What that means is that the replicas produce concrete evidence when something is actually agreed upon. This means that as soon as a replica sees this message, you know for a fact that this, this is agreed upon and you do not need to wait any longer. This allows us to securely go as fast as the network. If a network attack comes in or the network does not behave properly, then this only slows down the consensus algorithm but does not pose a risk for security. Finally, a lot of projects that use a blockchain to reach consensus are centered around the approach that the blockchain must only be appended to and stored forever. In those projects, we already see that the blockchain reaches sizes of hundreds of gigabytes. We aim to process way more messages than that, which would mean that the blockchain would be even larger. With this approach, it would no longer be feasible to download the entire blockchain and validate each step of the history. For that reason, we added a new mechanism into our consensus protocol, which allows a replica to securely catch up to the latest state of the consensus algorithm without seeing or validating the entire history. This means that we can remove all parts of the blockchain and a newly joining replica can very quickly catch up and start participating. With this design, we have a consensus algorithm that offers high throughput and low latency. This forms a solid foundation for an internet computer that's a pleasure to use.